Hi, it's Margarita from iConsult.com. Imagine you have an interface and you need an icon for it. At the same time, you want to use this icon two times bigger. But this way, lines are not the same. They are too wide. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the lines thinner on the two examples. Also, I will show you the way to recreate the lines themselves when it is needed and possible problems that might be there. All you will need for this – an icon to work with and Adobe Illustrator to work in. First of all, get a vector icon to work with. There are plenty of totally free icons on iconz.com. I'll download a beaver for a start. When the file is opened, let's make a copy of the icon. Select it and drag holding Alt and Shift. Now let's make the icon two times bigger. Now let's give it some space. As far as our altered icon is exactly two times bigger, we are going to make the lines exactly two times thinner. Select the icon again and press Ctrl-C then Ctrl-B to make a copy of this icon at the back. I want to recolor figure at the back so that it will show what we started with. Just any color, it doesn't matter. And then lock the figure so it doesn't get in the way later. Now I select the black icon and click here to change fill and stroke. Now it doesn't have any fill color and it has a black stroke. In the upper panel you can change the stroke width. To do this, simply hover these numbers and scroll the mouse wheel. In this case, I will leave the 2 pixel stroke. Then I'm taking Shape Builder tool and separate all the figures so they are not together anymore. Before we move forward, let's get rid of this weird angle on the beaver's ear. I zoom in to see what happened there. With Direct Selection tool, select the anchor point. Aha! It has a problem with one of the handles. Select the point, hold Alt, take the handle and put it in the right direction. Now we'll tweak a little bit the other handle. Now I'll fix the second ear. So now everything is ready and we just select the beaver and expand the strokes. Now all we have is filled paths. And what we want to keep is the empty little line inside the figures. So we take the Shape Builder tool and click everywhere we want to keep the figures. And then holding Alt click everywhere you want to remove the figure. Now we can do it with all the other shapes. Ok, first I have to create the figure inside and then I'm deleting everything outside or just unnecessary. And the thinner lines are done. Let's check how it will be rasterized. Something's not perfect. Let's get back from pixel preview mode. And now we can get rid of the yellow figure at the back. Unlock it and delete. Now again to the pixel preview mode. And something wrong is here. The beaver is standing slightly off the pixels. Easy to fix. Okay, now we have two pixel perfect icons of different size but with the same line width. There is also the option to recreate the strokes from the field paths. This solution will be not always applicable, I'll explain why a bit later, but it gives you a bit more freedom. Let's begin. First of all, get an icon. So I open this file and make the copy of the icon. 
Then I'm making it two times bigger. And placing it right on the pixels. Yep, pixel perfect. Now I'm pressing Ctrl C then Ctrl B to copy this icon and paste it on the back. And then recolor it. Just in any color. It will be our guide. And then lock the recolored figure. Now I'm selecting again the black figure and, and changing places of fill and stroke color. Then I'm taking Shape Builder tool and separate all the figures so they are not together anymore. Now let's start with the upper part of the octopus. I'm taking Direct Selection tool and delete the sides of this figure. Now this figure is not closed anymore. It consists of two separate lines. I press ctrl shift g to ungroup this figure and now we have two separate lines. This one will not be needed, so we just make it invisible. What we want to make now is the edge of this black line going exactly in the middle of the yellow one. To see this pixel grid you can adjust the parameters by pressing ctrl k and set up grid units and divisions every pixel. So we close the preferences and get back to the black line. We want to make it bigger so this edge is going exactly in the middle of the yellow line. Now zoom out and expand this black thing. Now again we don't need part of this figure. What we want to remain is the lower edge of it. There are different ways to select and delete what you don't need. You can press Q to get the lasso tool and draw the area in which you want to select all the anchor points and then delete them. Now select them, every single one of them and delete except the lower edge. Now switch the stroke and the fill color and adjust the width of it. Now we are going to do the same thing for the second line of the octopus. With direct selection tool we select and delete the sides of the figure. And then we will make the lower part invisible because we don't need it. We will work with the upper part of it. Let's make it 4 pixel wide and then expand. Now again we want to keep only the lower edge on the black figure we have. With the direct selection tool we will select and delete the sides again as we did before. Now with selection tool double click on the figure, double click on it again until you can get these two details separately. Then select the upper one and delete it. Now you want to switch the fill and the stroke color again and make the stroke a little bigger. Ah, oh, let's see. Okay, I'll fix it later. So I'm making this line a bit wider. And let's see what's with the eyes of the octopus. There is no need to perform anything difficult here because it's just a circle. So I'm selecting just one eye of it and making it a little bit smaller. And then the same with the second eye. Now we can get rid of the yellow figure at the back. We don't need these lines at all. And this part, yeah, we don't need it also. Let's select it and delete. Well. In my view, the eyes are just too small for such a big octopus. I'm going to make them bigger. Yep, we have a perfect octopus, two times bigger with the same line width. And it's also adjustable, you can do whatever you want here. And it's also pixel perfect. You have to be careful here to keep this icon pixel perfect. 
your initial lines were two pixels wide, then you have to multiply two pixels by some number, by two, by three, by six, but don't put just any number there because pixels will be blurred and icon won't be perfect. Even though the second method gives you more flexible results, it's not always the perfect choice. If you have an icon with more intricate details, it will require more effort and iterations to recreate the strokes. However, the first method will give you quick and easy results in almost any case. I'll just repeat it here for you. After I have switched fill and stroke colors, I choose the right stroke width and expand the strokes. After that, with Pathfinder tool, I delete all the unnecessary figures. I will keep the eyes of the wolf the same. And now I'm going to make this icon two times bigger. Place it right on the pixels. I have to tweak the eyes a little bit, make them pixel perfect. Sometimes you have to tweak tiny little details, just keep an eye on them. And now it's done! Quick and easy! If you're planning to download an icon from iconsay.com, there is even easier way to get the icon, which has outlines already made of strokes. You can try this option by switching off the toggle simplified SVG and then download icon as usual. Many of the icons will have more editable version in this case. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. See you in the next lessons. Bye!